Hey everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about Unit 3 now. We're going to we're moving on from Unit 2, and we're going to talk about Unit 3. And in this particular video, we're talking about ch um, Chapter 17 in the book. Now, it may be good to go back and review um, the information from Chapter 16 about the gold foil experiment, because the gold foil experiment is what kind of gave us the general idea of this um, structure of an atom, where we had a nucleus, which contained the protons and later we find out that it contains nucle nu neutrons and then around the outside we have electrons and so here we can see a picture of that now this was a good model for a lot of years um, that Rutherford came up with until a guy by the name of Nels Bohr came along Nels Bohr did some research on electrons. What he did is he ended up adding energy to electrons. Okay, so he would add energy to an electron here, and what he found is an electron would then move up, kind of like um, a ladder. It would go from here to here. Okay, and so Nels Bohr determined that since electrons would move up by adding energy he determined that what must be is that this must look like kind of like a, a planet they call it the planetary the planetary model and so Nels Bohr is the guy who come came up with the planetary model and while that's not completely accurate in terms of what it is today it's still close enough that he is um, he's kind of like still the man and we still use the planetary model okay so here's here's what we know uh, based on Bohr that the atom the electrons these blue things these blue things are electrons they the closer they are to the nucleus the less energy they have Okay, I think that that's important. Electrons want to be as close to the nucleus as possible. So here we have a, a ring, and in it we put as many electrons as we can, and then we have a second ring, and then in that we put as many electrons as, as we can, and then we go. And so the difference between the electron here and the electron here is that this electron on the second ring has more energy and that is key to his structure okay and remember he did this because he was shining energy on it and um, another way of talking about energy is light so let me let me make this a little bit bigger here cuz I'll uh, I'll do this here so instead of instead of a planetary model that looks like this I'm going to do this I'm going to make this really big so you have an electron here and then he would shine light on it or energy and because the light or energy has energy it gives that electron energy so because it now has energy where does it go it moves up okay and so this is how atoms absorb energy as they do it through their electrons now we have an electron that has a lot of energy or more energy than it should guess what happens to that electron when he removes the light or the source of energy that electron then will move back down and it will release energy because this has high energy this has lower energy so guess what has to happen the energy has to go someplace the law of conservation of energy says the energy has to go someplace so it's given off in the form of light so light goes in light goes in and excites the electron makes it go to a high energy place and then after the light is removed then the electron goes back down and it releases light in the process this is exactly how a neon light works and so 
the Bohr model developed a whole bunch of terminology. Okay, He developed the terminology of these spheres and are these rings around here, like planets orbiting around the sun. If, if this is the sun, then this is a planet orbiting around the sun. And so he called these things shells. Okay. And then within the shells, there's specific places that electrons occupy. And that's these things. Okay. So this electron is going to kind of be here, this one's going to be here, this one's going to be here, this one's going to be here. So all on this second shell, there's a place, and that's called a, yep, you got it, that's called a subshell. Okay, so that's a, a division further than the shell. And guess what? You can take these subshells and divide the subshells even more for more electrons, and we call each of those an orbital. And that's, and then within each orbital, you can actually put two electrons, okay? And so this is a bad picture to represent um, what an electron, what electrons actually move and actually look around. Um, the best picture is what we call the electron cloud model. Okay, so let me get rid of this here. Whoops, let me get rid of all this. And then let me explain what happens with an electron cloud model. Okay, instead of the electrons moving here, okay, like just orbiting around and around and around and around here, what happens is the electron cloud model takes into account three-dimensional space. And so it doesn't just kind of float flat in a pancake like going around in a circle in an ice rink this the electrons actually will move all sorts of places it could go out here it can move in here okay so it's like a three-dimensional sphere that encompasses the nucleus okay the electrons are most likely found here that doesn't mean they can't be found out here, or out here, or out here every once in a while. But most of the time they're found here, uh, closest uh, in this shape. Now, this is, the, this is the shell, and just like Bohr's model, the electron cloud model can say, hey, there's another shell on top of that. Or surrounding that so instead of again being a planetary circular motion like around in a in an ice rink there's going to be another shell so you know those Russian nesting dolls those marushkas that's what this looks like so it's a it's a it's an electron shell within an electron shell and so they kind of keep doing that and then there can be one out here one out here and they can keep going bigger and bigger and bigger and so that is how kind of we built up the current model of an atom. And the important thing in the middle of it all is that Bohr was at the center of it doing research with electrons. And so the Bohr model is something that we're going to use often. So I hope that helps explain the different atomic models and have a great day.